Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Amanda May with Art of Design and I'm here to talk about counted cross stitch today. And this episode is focused on how to organize your digital patterns and how to organize some of those wonky shaped patterns. And then we're gonna do some save the stitches and we're gonna do our giveaway winner. It's gonna be a, just a fun little episode. So come on down, let's talk counted cross stitch. All right, what we're gonna talk about first is organizing and how do you organize all those digital patterns and all of those uh, freebie charts that you get from your local needle workshops if they give out you know sometimes they're exclusive designs that you can only get at that shop and they're usually single page printouts eight and a half by eleven inches or the a4 size paper and before you know it you've got all of this loose paper around well you're in luck this time of year is perfect. Usually starting at the end of July all the way until mid-September, it's back to school season here in the United States, which means that the shelves are lined from top to bottom, usually in the office supply section or in the front of the big box stores with all of the back to school supplies. Now, what does that mean for a cross stitcher? <laughs> well, that means a lot. It means pencil pouches that you can put your miscellaneous floss in, floss that isn't been bobbinated, floss that maybe you've lost your holder or even your comp your floss organizer. You have your organizer, it's got all the floss, well, where the heck do you put it now? Put it in a pencil pouch. I got this one for 99 cents, okay? They're not terribly expensive. They are in, they do have that clear vinyl that a lot of the project bags right now have and you can go ahead and stick your goodies in there. Well, now with this pencil pouch, you can use it like a cosmetic bag, you know, where you put it in a larger tote or you put it in a binder. That's right, your back to school binders. Now, all year long, you can get binders in the office supply section, office, uh, actual office stores, or um, in your big box stores, specialty stores, you can even order them online. And usually you can get just plain white, plain black, not fancy ones, and then label the sides of them. Or you can get some fun ones. Look at this fun one I got. I got this because who doesn't love pastels? I mean, really. Well, a lot of people don't love pastels, but I love pastels. So I grabbed this one inch binder. Now, I'm I can put a side label down here with my label maker of what is inside this binder. So when it goes on my bookshelf, I know that this has, you know, printed patterns, my digital patterns, maybe all my frosted pumpkin stitchery patterns or all my Halloween patterns. But for the sake of this video, I just wanted to show you a one inch pattern with a uh, one inch binder with a lot of patterns inside. Different sizes can fit in here. Now I know a lot of you you've been cross stitching for years and you're going, Amanda, this isn't new. We know this, Amanda. Well, that's great. I'm so glad that you know this, but some of us are new to cross stitching. We're new to organizing and before we know it, we get overwhelmed. There is so much paper. There's so much fun stuff and designers create patterns in all different sizes. So that's why having binders is so important to help you stay organized. And with the binders, you're going, well, I don't want to hole punch it, Amanda. How are they going to stay in the binder? Well, that's what sheet protectors are for. Now, I got this set, 16 pages, 99 cents. Again, back to school time. Things are on sale. And now, until probably mid-September, October, you're going to find stuff half off or more. Or you can go online. There's a range of products, a range of prices, okay? I'm talking budget friendly right now. So just to get you started, 16 pages, the clear sheet protectors. These can hold your eight and a half by 11 patterns. Now I put in here, I've got the patterns that I have made and started on are working on. Right here I have one of my floss organizers that I haven't loaded yet. But look, I load this floss organizer, I put it in here, and I'm halfway through into kitting my project, my upcoming project. This is a great idea for when you're uh, working on your mania projects. If say you don't wanna have everything in a project bag, 
like this. All right, you got project bags. You got your cosmetic bag. This is my travel bag. It's got a project in there. Oh, look, another project bag. But wait, there's more. What if you have another project bag? And another project bag. <laughs> and another project bag. And then, you know, then you have the glamorous, awesome, big project bag, okay? There are so many different project bags that you can put your, your projects in. Or if like mania starts, say you want, you only have five or six project bags or one project bag for that matter. And you need a place to store and organize your projects that are on hold or on hiatus, you can put them in here. Now, I will say, these are not archival safe, okay? I cannot guarantee at what temperature these the plastic might break down, okay? So you might not wanna put your fabric in here, but putting your floss and your printed pattern in here is a great idea. And you can come back to it later, Once, one side, two sides. Now these are all printed patterns that I have on eight and a half by 11, okay? So like my pattern from last week that I showed you guys that I premiered. I stitched it, I'm done, it's completed, it's in my book. I have it both electronic, which is another we need to talk about in the next episode. If you guys are interested, guys and gals stitching friends, if you're interested, comment below and tell me if you wanna see some ideas on how to organize your digital pattern stash or haul, whatever, what have you. But if you're physically printing out your patterns, this is a great way on how to store them. Again, here's the pattern from last week that I premiered. My row by row quilting pattern. I haven't started it yet, but it, now it's in my binder in my to start. Now, here we go. Patterns that don't fit a conventional size. Here's a pattern, my punch needle pattern. It's in a wonky, not a wonky, excuse me. It's in a differently size, but it still fits in here. Now, the top can still, if I, if I tip this over, the pattern can still slip out, okay? So this isn't, 100% perfect. But in an ideal world, you're pulling it off your bookshelf or your stack or however you decide to finally store your binders. You're pulling it out, you're opening it up, you're taking out your pattern, you're closing it, and you're putting it away. This is not something where you're like shaking it around and like throwing it around and stuff where all of your things can fall out. So like I said, not 100%, but it's a great idea. So what do you do with your patterns that are not to size? Like my prairie schooler pattern, it can fit in there. Here's a pattern, this is Lynn's Prince. This is one of the, the crows in the snow that I'd like to work on. She has it printed out in a large paper, but she folded it down and it was packaged small like this. This I can put in here and it's all now, I can have it in one place and I don't have to worry about the sizes. You know, Lizzie Cates have a specific size. Now, you're, if you are a Lizzie Kate collector, you have maybe a box or a tote or a small thing that fits all those beautiful patterns perfectly. But what about me? Say I'm new to Lizzie Kate and I only have one or two patterns. Something like this, again, put it in eight and a half by 11. Here is another interesting, way of printing out patterns and it's on this interesting shape now these are uh curtis's i can't show you because they uh he's got the chart actually the whole chart is on that physical pattern here but see this these are the wildflowers of america series i have i have several of the series and as you can see they're older they're yellowed they're out of print how do i store these it's a wonky size my pencil pouch, my clear pencil pouch, I can hold it. Or again, I can put it right in that slide sheet. Another example, I finished my cattle lantern. This was my working copy. Well, I'd like to keep my working copy. I don't wanna destroy it because I might make another cattle lantern pattern. I put it in my binder. Here's a free, my free that I got cross country trick or treat pattern here it's a it's a little it's a little witch okay freebie put it in my binder my needle made designs print out for the adam and eve chart one page put it in my binder okay also magazines you get a magazine 
you're limited on space. There's one or two patterns out of that magazine that you absolutely want and then you're passing the stash. You're taking out that one pattern and giving this the pattern book to somebody else who might enjoy the remaining patterns. You put your pattern in it, put it in your binder. Again, you can have as many binders as you have space and budget for and you can categorize them by season, holiday, designer, however you feel is the most conducive to your organizing style. Right now, I have my in progress binder, as in these are the patterns that I am, I am designing. I've printed it out, I'm making marks on them because they're drafts, seeing as I'm stitching, does this work, does this not work? So I have my working patterns and I have my completed binder, pattern binder. These are, I've stitched them, I loved them, I'm not getting rid of them. They're my working copies, irregular shapes, or just printed out my digitals, but I'm not gonna be referencing those anytime soon. So those get put in a different binder. Just ideas. I wanna show you some more of my haul, but let's finish up the organizing segment of this video and then I'll show you some more patterns I was showing. I was kinda quickly showing you all the really fun stuff that I have, including my little prairie schooler one. This is the original copy. It did just get reissued though. So I'm excited because it's so precious. All right, another way to organize is binders is the hangers that you put inside the binder to hang your full magazines. Now, this is something really interesting Jeremiah Junction did with their cross stitching country, their cross stitching magazine. They actually have their own binders and they have the actual hangers. Now, I'm gonna probably I'm gonna put a link below on places where you can find these hangers. I I got this, I purchased this already intact, but I just wanted to give you an idea that organizing your patterns is not a new concept. I mean this this is something that all cross stitchers new to the craft and older you just need to be reminded of hey there are binders you can put your magazines in and I can further if I needed to with my label maker label which what years or what magazine is in here say I I don't I don't have this magazine anymore and I have the just cross stitch put a label over it right you can repurpose these binders again you can find binders new at the big box stores you can also find used binders at the thrift store secondhand shops. They're not going to be pretty, they're not going to be perfect, but they're out there and there are, they are affordable. They have monster binders, the ones that are like four inches thick. Now, a lot of us can't lift that kind of weight for whatever reason. So that's why I, I'm recommending the one inch. It's not as daunting and it doesn't inhibit your movement if you can't lift that much. All right, so binders, within binders, within binders. The other thing, which of course, are quintessential, uh, you know, cross stitchers, um, Priscilla and Chelsea talk about, are the zip locks. Put it in a zip. Economical, you can buy a whole pack, put them in zip locks. That's cool, that's awesome, it's affordable, okay? Ziplocs, awesome. I have a lot of things in Ziplocs. I have a lot of things that I haven't sorted yet, projects that I'm in progress of, because a lot of us don't have tons of project bags or space for tons of project bags or the money for project bags. They're gorgeous, but they can be expensive. Or if we don't sew, or like me, I have tons of fabric to make project bags, but they're in project bags to make the project bags, right? So <laughs> Ziplocs, there's nothing wrong with Ziploc bags, okay? The next thing I wanna talk about is the actual magazine holders. You can get them at stores and they can be expensive. I'm showing you these that I got. I got this, this one <laughs> at a yard sale. This is actually a haul that I just got this week. I haven't sorted through it, but my idea with the cardboard organizer is to cover it and make it look awesome. So here is another organizer idea. These are old school organizers, okay? This is ugly, this does not match my style. 
I can maybe cover it with the contact paper. You know, I'm all about the contact paper right now. Make this pretty, reuse this, put all my Christmas patterns in, do, do something awesome. Oh my goodness, I am so sorry. There is a motorcycle out there and they are revving their engine to let us know that they are here. So we're just gonna keep on going and I am so sorry about the noise. All right, here's another thing I wanna talk to you about. Clear bag polys, poly bags. I have these, I got, I purchased them on eBay, set of 100. You can get them on other, other stores as well. They have the self-adhesive label. These can be taken off and put back on again. It's not ideal. It's not like a Ziploc bag where you can open it and close it and open it and close it and open it and close it. These are pretty much like put it in, seal it and forget it, and then open it without one or two more times before the stickum runs out. So this is not perfect. But I want to show you all, I know there's a lot of pattern designers out there right now who are doing digital downloads, but also selling their paper copies. This is an excellent way to package your magazines or your patterns. I want to show you these, this right here too. Um, Amazon sellers, a lot of them, they have to have the, the label that says this bag is not meant for children. It's a suffocation warning. Yes, they make them without the warning. I have them with the warning just, just to have them. So I want to show you that your magazine here, uh, here can fit in and I can seal this up. I can pull the, and I can seal it. Now I can ship this, I can store this. Yes, it does have a little extra room. I bought a larger size clear poly bag and I'll link that below just to have literally have some wiggle room. So here we go. You can also do that with your leaflet patterns, okay? You can do it with your smaller books and they make they make the clear poly bags in various sizes. I have six by nines. These I believe are 10 by 13s. They have eight and a half by 11s, but I will preface that by saying eight and a half by 11s, if you're trying to put eight and a half by 11 paper in there, it gets stuck. So I always go up a size. They have nine by 12s as well. Oh my gosh, I think I showed you everything. <laughs> All right, organizing. I hope, uh, I hope I kind of gave you some ideas, have some ideas flowing. Again, I'm gonna have some links down below. Comment, let me know if there's any organizing tips or tricks that you wanna see in my next video. I love organizing, I have a huge stash. It's not a one size fits all thing and organizing is an evolving process. You don't have to get it right the first time, but you can hit the reset button and try again. I have collections of floss away bags, Ziploc bags, bobbinated boxes, unbobbinated, unboxed, blah, blah, blah. I mean, the list goes on. It's a process. Organizing doesn't happen overnight, okay? Our, this hobby is epic, this hobby is awesome, and this hobby is evolving, okay? We have moved into the digital age, but the 1970s, 1980s binders are carrying us from the past into the present as far as organizing. Digital, I mean, who knew, right? <laughs> All right, let's move on to our next segment. It's called, What Did I Get? And look at my haul. And I'm really excited to show you a couple of the really fun patterns that I got that are going to be in my two stitch uh, list. I wanna start with my monster bubble pattern that I found and I emailed the designer. Unfortunately, I don't believe that she is creating anymore. She was out of California and I got this pattern in honor of the Bewitch Stitches group and it's the Lizzie Borden pattern and it is really cool. It's got a nice folk art look to it and I thought it was so fun for Halloween and for the Lizzie Borden fans. The next pattern that I have is Sheepish Designs. The grass is greener, and I really liked this pattern. I love the, the heart, and look at that cow with the horns, and the shepherd, 
and I really like that blue house. So I was really excited to get that pattern. The next is Elizabeth's Garden. It's by Liz Matthews. And what's really fun is that Hagerstown is right up the road. I'm not sure if she's still designing patterns, but Hagerstown is like going towards Gettysburg. It's in uh, North Central Maryland going towards Pennsylvania. So it's chock-a-block full of history and it's really neat to see this pattern. Put a bird on it. <laughs> All right, the next one is a Lottie Daw pattern. I really like this. It's got that kind of Art Nouveau look to it, Art Deco. I really like the flower in this. As you can tell, I love flowers. I love floral. Put a flower on it is really, <laughs> I think what my motto should be. I really like that. The next I have is Charity by Carriage House Samplings. And what I thought was neat about this is there's uh, a lot to this series. I believe there's Faith and a couple other ones. I really liked this one. Again, it's got a really cute bird and it looks like a small stitch, which is great. This one I got and I thought it was so fun. It is the Halloween tree. This is an older pattern and it encompasses a lot of buttons. This pattern is from 1990. So it's older. I don't believe we can find these buttons anymore, but you're in luck because there are so many amazing buttons and button companies out there. You can get some awesome epic buttons, stitch up this tree really quickly and put a button on it. <laughs> All right, in honor of Pam and Steph, I found another game board pattern and it's so darling. I really like this game board. I would probably change Probably if I finish it, I won't put it in a mat, but I think it's really cute. It's got the little farmhouse scene and it's got the little cows. <laughs> we have a lot of cows around here. And I have uh, with, my, with my needle, not with thy needle, but with my needle, we have Bunnies in the Garden by Ellen Chester. And what I really like about this pattern is the case and it, it the roll up. So I'm excited to learn how to do this. I have not opened this pattern yet, so I'm not sure about the directions. The scissor fob is really stinking adorbs. And again, I, I got this pattern for that roll up. And finally, I don't know how many of you love plastic canvas or have worked in plastic canvas. I see plastic canvas a lot out in the thrift stores, charity shops, and I, I, have, a, I have some plastic canvas pieces, but I've never done it. But I thought this was really cute along the lines of the gingerbread house stuff that I have I've purchased and I really like. This is the plastic canvas hometown, and I really like the idea of the little Christmas holiday village buildings. Anyway, again, plastic canvas Christmas is coming up, the holiday season. I've said before, Halloween and Christmas are my favorite times of year. And I believe that Halloween isn't just a day, it is a season. And Christmas is not just a day, it is a season. So on that note, I'm going to do some Halloween stuff next episode and I'd love for you to comment below if there's anything you would like to talk about in my next episode. It is of course pumpkin pie, pie spice season. Mm. But just let me know below if there's anything you want me to talk about. Again, I'm a new crafter or <laughs> no, not a new crafter. I've been dabbling in crafts way too long. <laughs> I'm a new cross stitcher. So I don't want to be on the videos just talking about stuff. You guys are like, guys and gals are going, oh my goodness. We know this Amanda May. Someone covered it in a floss tube video seven years ago. Where have you been? So I want to I wanna talk about things that are relevant to you, my stitchy friends, and what you want to hear about. Of course, I'm going to do the Stave the Stitches. Of course, I want to do my sustainability station. But I wanted to do that little tutorial today. And so next episode, let me know. What would you like to see? <laughs> Alrighty, let's talk about Save the Stitches. 
Now, as many of you know, I love to find needlework, whether it's quilting, crochet, knitting, counted cross stitch, stamped cross stitch, fillet crochet, bobbin lace, you name it. If a needle touched it, I pretty much love it. And then of course, anything with sequins. <laughs> All right, I wanna show you some of the finds that I have found over the last five years in no particular order. This is a faux quilt square by Bernice that I found and I purchased this to put in uh, the nursery for one of my kids. And I love that it's, it's quilted, it's nautical. I love it. Again, these treasures are everywhere. Open your eyes, look around, see it. <laughs> I got this lemon piece a long time ago. This is one of the first pieces that I ever saved before I fell in officially fell in love with cross stitch. I just love the lin the lemons. It the frame isn't my favorite, but it is professionally framed, so I haven't wanted to mess with it and it was framed in uh, Virginia. This I just I just love it. And this time of year, I'm really torn between letting go of my frozen lemonades and drinking my hot pumpkin spice lattes. I'm torn. <laughs> All right, the next Save the Stitches that I got, and I got laughed at at the store. Someone said, who would make that? Who would buy that? And I said, cross stitchers make them and I'm going to buy them. Take my money. Take it. Take my money. Here it is powder room. I mean, gorgeous. What better way to tell somebody where your restroom is than to stitch it and have it professionally framed? And do I have it hanging? Yes, I do. Do I love it? Yes, I do. Look at that. Gorgeous. Those are my save the stitches that are hanging in my house. I love them and I'm so happy to have them. I don't know the stories behind who stitched them, but they are treasures to me. And I really do believe that all of these works of art are treasures and they need to be saved and they need to be treasured and restored and kept for future generations. <laughs> all right, the sustainability station is save the art. <laughs> Moving on, we're gonna do the giveaway. I'm gonna turn this off, we'll, shoot, we'll do it on the computer, we'll do the random generator and see who the winner is. All right. Alrighty, I'm so excited. I had 16 different comments from 16 different wonderful viewers. So here we go, I'm gonna put on random.org for the giveaway between one and 16. Oh, well, I guess it helps if I get it over here, right? Uh, sorry, it's like not a steady cam either. One through 16. Oh, and the result is nine. So we go over here. Who's number nine? Okay, Gretchen, you're the winner of my first ever giveaway. Woo woo. All right, email me. I'm going to have it in the link. Congratulations to my first giveaway winner, but now it's time for a second giveaway. So comment below and tell me what you're looking forward to for this autumn. Are you looking forward to pumpkin spice? Are you looking forward to the leaves? Are you not looking forward to the leaf pick up? But let me know what you're looking forward to for this autumn. I want to hear from you. I love this community. I love the comments. Thank you so much. I'm going to let the giveaway run for one week. And then I'll pick a winner again with a random number generator. My email is listed below. Reach out to me, contact me. I would love it if you got if you want to like, subscribe to my my channel, and you can hit the little ring button so you can be notified when I post. I put po I'm really working on posting once a week, and the only thing that would really inhibit me from posting would be internet connection or electricity and not being able to upload a video. 
I want to thank you for spending your time with me. I look forward to showing you some of my works in progress for next week. Comment below about what you're looking forward to this autumn, what you want to see in future episodes. Also, link down below is to my blog. If you go to my blog, I'm going to have some exclusives coming up and you can subscribe to my newsletter and I'm going to be start I'm going to start doing some freebie patterns and they're only going to be available via newsletter. So go ahead and put in your email address, let me know. Uh, I'm, I'm going to start sending out some freebies. Okay, thank you again for joining me. Happy stitching. Happy week. Thanks for coming back. It's growing a little bit. I'll see you next week. Thanks again, friends.